top 10 things that Great Western Trail New Zealand brings compared to Great Western Trail and Great Western Trail Argentina. And here we go. And hello everyone, this is Stella and Karen from Mipu University. Welcome, welcome back. We have been enjoying Great Western Trail, all the three or three and a half versions of it. Yes. Don't you, Karen? Yes, indeed. It's been... It, it's how long ago now? I think it was a 2016 or 2017 game originally. Uh, it brought rails to the north and then it was revised, mm -hmm. redone, and now is a trilogy. It's a trilogy, so we're excited to show you Great Western Trail, ding, 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 New Zealand. Now, that's probably not the right song. That's probably like more the basic one, but yeah. kia ora. It's New Zealand. <laughs> yeah. It's not a New Zealand song, I'm not sure. No, it's not. <laughs> so here it is. So we're going to go through some of the key differences here. Ten. Uh, ten key differences. Ten differences. It's not everything. It's not a full review of everything that's going on, but it's what you can expect that varies from the game you already know. And just to describe what you can see here, this is the end of a game. This is the end of our live playthrough. If you uh, <laughs> tuned in and watched that, so you'll see the board state at the end of that very close game. Mm. 133 to 130 was the score there. It's very close indeed. Uh, so, yes, this is not what it looks like at the start. This is the end of the game. So in no particular order, let's start with number one. Is New Zealand. It's very obvious. This is based in New Zealand. It's not Argentina. And it's not in the... In the south of the US. Thank you. It's set in New Zealand. And of course, the biggest thematic difference there is that instead of beef and cattle, uh, we're... Wool and sheep. We're running sheep and we're running wool, which of course was uh, very big in the early economies of... New Zealand. New Zealand and Australia as well. And the money actually called pounds in this one. It's that early. Now it's called New Zealand dollars, yes. but in this game it's called pound. Yes, set in the 19th century. So the second major difference which flows on from that theme is that the cards, they really have two uses now. Two numbers as well. The original Great Western Trail, they always really just had that one use as beef value. In Argentina, it added the strength value, which let you, um, which let you help farmers along the way. But now it really has two completely separate values, which give you separate economic benefits. So there is the breeding value, which works the same way as it always has. And there is the wool value here. And there are new actions which allow you to shear your sheep. And it works in kind of the same way as a delivery. You'll be allowed to reveal a certain number of different sheep cards and discard them and get money for the wool and make a delivery the same way that you would with a livestock delivery. Ones. And the delivery is to different areas different types of trading different posts, type, yes. yes so there are trading posts specific for livestock so those have these pointy banners and there are trading posts specific to wool and those have these uh, circular round, banners circular banners like these ones the round ones and you can see along these shipping boards which we haven't actually talked about yet but before we talk about the next difference we do have the how to play video of this game great western trail new zealand well Great Western Trail and Great Western Trail Argentina as well. So check that out. I'll put it in the description below. And also, if you don't mind any like, comments and subscribe, that will really help and we really appreciate that. And moving on to the third one. Which is that the trains are gone and replaced with the shipping board. There's a couple things different here. So no train at all, no big linear no. train line. No. The shipping is not like the Argentina shipping. So the Argentina shipping was part of the, was more related to the delivery process. Now it's more related to how open your options are. You still move around this shipping board and we've got sailors instead of the engine drivers or machinistas from the Argentina, previous versions. Yeah. Uh, but it's no longer just a single linear track. Now you've got this this track here, you start over in the dock, there's a big loop and there's some branches that go off to other places as well. Yeah, like, um, so this just stops there and then just like branches here or here in this area and yep. so on. So it still has some of the familiar feelings about it. It still has the equivalent of stations, which you can upgrade to get down discs. You can still recruit 
Uh, they're now harbour masters instead of station masters. And there's a couple of other places that you can, you can pay to put things down for little amounts of points. But where this is really different is that in the original Great Western Trails, you could always deliver to the entire range of cities. Now there's a number of these trading post harbours, generally pretty high scoring and good ones, uh, which you have to unlock by shipping. So instead of making things cheaper, it makes things available. And I think one of the things about the way the shipping board works, it feels a little bit more modern Euro because now you've kind of got more branches and options that you can go for. Yeah. It was always a very straightforward, simple, linear, hmm. linear with a few implications in the original game. And now you can go off on branches. It feels kind of more typical options. Euro. Yeah. Which sort of brings us to number four, which is the deck building in this game. Oh, love it. It is, in Grey Western Trail, it's always had deck building. You were always adding cattle and objective cards to your deck, but now it has much more deck building capabilities to it. And it feels more like a typical deck builder. So this, in a couple of areas, this game feels more modern Euro than the original one. Let's show uh, example cards, shall we? Yeah, so you've still got your objective cards. They work the way they always have. But then there'll be eight other cards, oh, and the cattle cards, of course, or the sheep cards. But there's eight other cards that you can now uh, gain and add to your deck through various, various places where you'll find those icons. And you get them as bonuses for completing hazards. You get them as bonuses for putting things on the shipping board. There are four basic types of these cards. One that gives you two coins, and one that gives you a certificate. One that advances you on this uh, bird track, which will is uh, new. Who'd have thought? We'll talk about that one a little later. And one that gives you another type of sheep that doesn't come from the market. And then you've got, there are 10 different, more powerful cards. You choose four sets of them at random. And those can come into play as well. So you've got different things to go for with these cards. When you have these cards in your hand, they, they don't choke up your deck. So when you have one, you play it, you resolve its effect, and you get to replace it on your turn. And you can keep doing that multiple times if you keep getting cards that give you those bonuses. This is my actual deck here. <laughs> yes, <exactly. laughs> that we this just the, placed. <laughs> this is the end of a game state here. So you can... Thick deck. It's a very thick deck. It's also, yeah. So, yeah, it... It gives you all these extra things you can do with your cards, and then, of course, the faster you cycle your deck, you get the benefit for getting those rewards over and over. So it adds this, uh, the benefit of cycling a deck quickly becomes bigger. That might be my favourite new mechanic in this Great Western Trail, New Zealand. Well, at the end of this video, we will share you which one is our favourite, whether the main one, the Argentina, or New Zealand, so stay tuned for that. All right. Next one, Taryn, is probably is a good time to talk about the Pathfinder track. We just mentioned it quickly before. Yes, here we, here we go again with something that uh, makes it feel more modern Euro. Mm -hmm. Now we've got a track that we yep. can advance on and, and get other second, bonuses. The second track is the gold track, which is uh, essentially just another type of resource. Yes. So the Pathfinder track, it gives you, gives you a place where you uh, shed one of your white discs to start the game. And then as you get bird icons, you'll move up through here and it will give you points, it will give you gold, and a couple of other bonuses. Um, one of your steps, one of your extra steps, uh, it's no longer something that's covered by a disc, it now comes from moving up on Pathfinder. And you can also get to the point where you either get another step or you stop having to pay the cost of hands, which is a nice... Uh, Nice little discount if you're on risk paths through the game. Correct. You can see here the end of the game we just played. We were both uh, both at the top of the track. It's got a couple of interesting implications, which I think work really nicely with the building element of the game. Because you'll see there are some spaces on the board, and they're generally the more valuable spaces. They're off the risk paths. Sometimes they come with gold bonuses you're not allowed to build there unless you've reached a certain step on the Pathfinder track. So it makes that early part of the game where players are like uh, 
trying to put the cheap buildings down in the best spaces or in the, the grassland bonus spaces. You can't just go and do that now. You can't just be the first person to build and take those prime spots. You have to have found some early Pathfinder bonuses to be allowed to do that. It's true. It makes it so interesting. And I think I have underused that path in one game. In another game, I over overshoot it. So I'm just like, at the top of the track and then I keep getting that track from my deck building cards and I just keep getting coins and I ended up with lots of coins and never in other games of Great Western Trail that I have played ever that I had 20 something coins at the end of the game. 20... 20 one? 26 according 26. to yeah. this <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of coins. Yeah, that side of it is interesting, the overshooting of, of this track. Again, it's something you get very used to in Euro games is once the track reaches the top, there's nowhere else to go and the reward is actually quite a lot weaker than it was before. So really over, overdoing it on this, getting like, you could fill your deck with all of these cards and yeah. work really hard, but that's Go not going to be worthwhile. No, not um, at the end. So it's like having money is five to one at the end of the game for points. So having money at the end of the game is usually not the best way, but hey, you know, I just like keep getting those cards, so what can I do? I'll just get money because I'm already on, on the top. All right, the sixth one, this is a, a little rule difference, I guess, is when you make your deliveries, in the other Great Western Trials, when you make your deliveries, you discard your entire hand and score only the ones that don't match. Now you can keep, well, you not have to can, keep. Now you, you keep. must keep cards yeah. in hand if you don't reveal them to score them. And it makes, it gives you a couple of other options, I guess. And it's because you've got the shearing action and the delivery action. Sometimes you want to mix them up for one versus the other. But True. it means you they, they stay in hand. You can't just dump off your objective cards that way as well. So it makes for, I guess it means you're cycling your deck a little bit less. Mm, yeah, definitely. So number seven, which I think is an interesting... An interesting change, we kind of alluded to it before, but didn't approach it from this side, is that without the railway track, there's no longer a way to discount the money cost of deliveries. The basic game, it was always, you could make a distant delivery, but it would cost more unless you'd worked on your railway line. In this one... You're just relying on the certificates... Yeah, the shipping never makes anything cheaper. The Correct, shipping yeah. opens up new places, but the cost on each of the deliveries is fixed. And so it takes out one of the balances that you had to consider in, in the original game. And so it means there, there's never that strategy where there's someone who will be really money poor when they go for the high value ones versus someone who knows that they'll uh, invest in something and then have more money through that at the end of the game when they're making deliveries. So number eight, uh, it's it's sitting right here. There's a big change to the market side of the game. Definitely. Um, it always used to just be an employee market and now it's been split into two halves. Now there is a, an employee market and there's a bonus tile market. And the employee market has a very standard economy now. If there's a whole lot of one type of employee, they'll be cheaper. So it just goes up and down mm -hmm. based on this. The, the same, yeah, the same row. Yeah. Oh, sorry, column. The one which is more timing based is now the bonus tile market, where you can, if you get a bonus tile action, you can take one of these tiles. They might give you points. They might have extra costs. This one's just, you spend that new gold resource. Get eight you have to points. have four of them plus the money to get eight points. It's also wild employees. It makes, oh, nice. makes it a bit easier to mm. uh, get the types of employees that you might need. And these actually might be here, might be there. It could cost, like, in general, it would be cost more than, obviously, with the gold as well, than the normal employees. But it's worth it sometimes, definitely. I can tell you that. Mm. Uh, looking at my bot, which employee? Now, the question is, have you all been to New Zealand? Or are you in New Zealand? Uh, I have been to New Zealand when I was like nine years old. I would love, 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 love to go back to New Zealand. Now, I'm going to ask you though, if you have been or if you live there or if you just find out about it on the internet or someone that who's been there, 
Which island should I go? The South Island or the North Island? And what are the differences? Have you been there? I have not. No, you have haven't not. been at all. I well, I would like to go to Wellington, or which is obviously in Wellington, yes. which limits me uh, to one yeah. side of the yeah <laughs> on the island. So this is the board game meetup there where it is. I'm kidding. It's like it's back in the whatever year it was. The board game meetup place wasn't there, or maybe it's there. I haven't been to Wellington at all. If you have been. Please let us know all about it, all about New Zealand. And I remember it just being beautiful. Uh, I think I've only been in the North Island, which is more scenic, going to the scenic route and looking at the uh, views and this amazing lake. But it's not much stage and I don't have any photos either when I was little like that. Mm. You would have had to have get them, got them uh, processed at the chemist, the old, old <laughs> the sort old of camera. Style. My mum might have it, but I definitely did not have a smartphone back then. Yes. I actually remember I went to a news agent, me and my sister. Uh, like, you know, we live in Indonesia back then and we went to a news agent and then we look at some, you know, adults magazine and we just like point and giggles and then <laughs> the news agent person, the shopkeeper, it's like, ah, no, just like got rid of us and then just like put the, the adult magazine away. I was like, mm, okay. In, in New Zealand. In New Zealand. Because <laughs> it's like in a Western country, like in Indonesia, you don't sell that sort of thing in a news, news agent. Anyways, let's go to the next one. Uh, a very a very specific consequence of, uh, of this area, which makes, it takes one of the key strategic parts out of the original game, or it yep. changes it, is that one new bonus tile gets added here every single time there's a delivery to Wellington. So there was always that thing in the original game where... You want to do a hazard or... There could either be one or two employees. Employees, added, that's right, yeah. Which meant that if you were doing a lot of deliveries, you could set the pace of the game. You can't do that with your tile choices anymore. It's now you can only yeah. set the pace of the game by doing deliveries quickly. Yeah. So it takes out one... Element. Whether, whether good or bad, it takes out that element of what you had originally. You've got to find other ways to do it. You can still set it, like you just deliver it a lot. You just like skip past a lot of the buildings and then do deliveries. But in that particular one, yes, you can't really do have control anymore over it. And then the tenth difference, the tenth and last in our list, is if you look at the auxiliary action area, Conspicuous by its absence is <laughs> the move engine backwards or do something backwards to trash a card from your hand. That was all, you always could go really aggressively in either of the original games in thinning out your deck and getting rid of the weak cards. It's a lot tougher in this game. Really, really hard. The only way that I can see immediately is discarding two of these cards. This is the card where you usually use one. Uh, so discard one and then you can draw and discard two cards. And if you use two of them, and then you can actually use, you can actually do this. You yeah. can put them together and that means that you trash one card and get a gold. Yeah. And it's very specifically a number one card. So it yeah. takes a lot of effort to go to get those and and thin out. So it's really yeah. quite slow to thin out. There's a couple of other ways. There's there's some effects that let you swap out a number two card for one of the Romney number three cards. Mm -hmm. there's uh, also, but they, they're hard to come by. Yeah, there's also this one. Basically nothing to do with trash, but cycling your deck more than trashing. Yeah, cycling, be cycling it becomes, I think, more valuable here than it was in the previous games. So now is the time to reveal which one of the three is our favorite and why? Parent, maybe you're gonna start first? I'll start first. I think my favorite I like Argentina. I think you know, anytime we have one of these reviews, we talk about how I I like a, a timing challenge and a direct interaction with my opponents. And I still really like the port mechanism in Great Western Trail Argentina. I like that you've got this scenario where it's the, it's the only one where there is a placement space that is exclusive. And so you've got to really time your actions 
to get the single highest scoring ones in that area. That, I think, is something you get in Argentina that you don't get in any of the other games, uh, and that's why that one's my favourite. And my favourite... ...is this one, Great Western Trail New Zealand. The deck building is actually the one. I really love deck building mechanic and the fact that, okay, fine, you can't trash it, it's fine, but you can cycle your deck and then able to get these cards where you just use it and you just like, you take it, when you draw it, you can just discard it and then do the action and keep the other one. It gives me more resources and help me with the Pathfinder track, although I, I said earlier, I also shot a little bit, but give me more money, give me more actions, give me things that I can do I don't know, I just like it feels good. I feel like a, a, like a remove the limitation of the things I can do with that deck building. I know at the end that you just get the same amount of cards or whatever. Um, and I think that if it's not the Pathfinder track, I find it interesting. It's something that you can aim for, gives you coins, gives you some bonus on the way. And some buildings actually requires you to place that. So for those people that are not focusing on the Pathfinder track, finds it they need to there's no options, they have to do it if they want to place some building. I feel like a Great Western Trail would be like generalization of all and then spe specialization on like one or two things probably. Yeah. Certainly I think the original Great Western Trail is the tightest in money of all three oh, yes. of them. And it is a slightly longer game, you get more laps, so there's, there's more tactics involved in that. Uh, yeah, money I think has gotten a lot mm -hmm. freer in each subsequent one that's come out. So you do, it doesn't feel as frustrating as the first game does yeah. as well. I that's think, probably so. why, that's probably another reason. Like with the wingspan as well, I like the one that gives you wild resources. So that makes it like for me personally and not for Terran usually. Yeah. Now the question is now, which one is your favorite? You might have seen how to play, you might have played all three and a half of them. Please let us know in the comments below. I'd love, love, love to know which one's your favorite. And thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, everyone. Play a lot of games. I'll see you next time. Bye.